Welcome back for another exciting video here. It is uh, something that's not too bad. It's uh, section 2.8, graphing linear and absolute value inequalities. This is from, I'm not sure why it did that right there. I'll get that maybe fixed, I don't know. But this is basically from Algebra 1, just to repeat. Um, uh, really the only thing that may be new was graphing absolute value graphs, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, we're going to graph straight lines and then graphs that look like V's, okay? Uh, so again, Algebra 1 standards, Algebra 1 skills, um, so nothing too difficult here. Let's get into some inequalities, some types of lines, and some shading regions. Um, this here is going to be needed for like example types 2 and 3, not for example type 1, because 1 is just going to be a straight line uh, with no shading or anything like that. But still, we can get into that now instead of waiting um, in you know subsequent videos so inequality symbols remember we have four of them okay we have what this is uh, right there this is called less than we have a greater than all right we have less than or equal or equal and then this is greater than or equal right so those are um, I don't even know since those have been used. They might have been used since maybe 6th or 7th grade. I know when I taught 7th grade, we used them. So um, maybe 6th grade. I'm not sure. Uh, but at least 7th grade. Okay, some, so some types of lines. We have what's called dotted um, or solid. Okay, now this is where it gets a little tricky. So we got to understand and make sure the inequality symbols match up to the dotted and solid lines. So a dotted line is only going to be less than or greater than symbol. A solid line is going to be less than or equal, greater than or equal. Uh, so make sure you have the right lines, like dotted versus solid, depending upon whatever the symbol is. In order to shade the region, okay, um, so less than or less than or greater than basically what's going on is we're shading down shading below line if you have greater than or greater than or equal obviously we're going to shade above line right pretty opposite versus the other one uh, and I'll get some more tips and tricks on those um, some of the lines could look like very very vertical and so we got to understand what that means. Um, they're not quite like straight up and down, but they're you know tilted, slanted one side or another. So we got to kind of pay attention to that. But shouldn't be too bad. Should be very, uh, very not very new anyway to you. So uh, we should be able to fly right through this. But let's go on to the example type one. There's only two problems. I'm gonna do one and have you guys pause the video to do the next. Okay, example type one. Uh, just graphing linear equations. So just graphing a regular line. Remember, when we graph equations, the best way to do this is to put it into y equals mx plus b. And we have had a lot of practice doing this already. So I'm going to do this one here uh, because it is a little tougher. And you're going to do that one, the very first one. So I want to put this into y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to make sure this 3x goes over to the other side. Now, you remember from my previous videos is that when I make those arrows, I change the sign of whatever I circled. So this is positive 3, so I'm making it a negative 3x. Now this is still a plus 2 there. Now this is 1 half of y, so i got to get rid of the 1 half. And that means I need to multiply by 2. Okay, so I need to multiply everything over here by 2. So the 2 cancels. The 1 doesn't really matter, so it's just y. Then this 2 has to distribute to, each every, to every term over here. So it's negative 6x plus 4. So this is my line that I need to graph. So how do we do this? Remember we start at the y-intercept so this is step one and then our slope is step two. So I start at the y-intercept which is four. I'm gonna put a dot. Our slope is six. So here's kind of what if we remember great if we don't then I'm gonna put some little um, notes down for you. So for a negative slope we could do two things. One is we can go up and to the left, okay, because that's negative. Like up is positive, but left is negative. 
So positive divided by negative is negative. That's how we can determine negative. Or I can go down and forward. So down is negative over and forward is positive. So that's all again how I get negative. Or for positive slope, I could go up and to the right. So up and to the right is both positive. Or I could go down and to the left because those are both negative. But when you divide them, you get positive. So that's why it's able to work out. And the reason I show you both of these is because sometimes it's going to go off the graph, just like in this case. So this is a negative. It's really negative 6 over 1, right? That's my slope. Remember, rise over run. We talked about that in one of the last videos. So I'm going to rise 6 and go over 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, and now I'm off the graph. And then if you're off the graph, you cannot do that. All right, it's not going to be accurate, so you're going to have to do the opposite way. So I'm going to go down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then because it's negative, I have to go right 1. So there is my new um, dot. Now I'm going to draw a line, and there's your line between those two points. So that is your line that we would be graphing on this instance. Okay, what you're going to do is do the same thing over here. All right, pause the video, do it, and then hit play. So in this case, our y-intercept is actually a fraction. And that is okay. All right, that's okay. So I'm going to go up a half. So up a half is going to be right around here. All right. Then I have to go um, a fourth negative, which is my slope. So a fourth, I'm going to go down one, which is now negative a half. And I'm going to go over this way, 4. So right there. Or I could have gone up a half, which is 1 and a half, and then over 4 this way. You see how my lines, if I drew a line, it's going to be right there. So let's draw a line. And we'll go between them. Um, boom. There's my line. Okay. And, you know, it would be great to put arrows in there. You know, it's not going to kill you if you don't. But try to do that if you can remember. That's example type 1. I will get into example type 2 and 3 uh, here shortly. Alright, this is example type number 2 in graphing linear and absolute value inequalities. So now this is graphing linear inequalities. So that means that we're going to graph the line the same way, but instead of it being a solid line um, and no shading because it's an equation, all right? Uh, we're going to now have some shading areas, and I'll explain why you do. Um, but yeah, so this is example type 2 in, what is it, section 2.8, graphing linear and absolute value inequalities. So let's get started here. Uh, you can do that one. We'll pause the video here in a little bit. But I'm gonna, I have this one here. Uh, I'm going to do this one here. And I'm going to do uh, this one here, okay, the word problem, the first word problem. Uh, those are a little more difficult, so we got to make sure we spend the time to understand how to do them. I'm going to put this again into y equals mx plus b form. I know the equal sign is equals, but this is not. That's okay. It acts the same way. You still want to do it in that form. Um, so I'm not going to like go through the process a lot of these because you've done them a lot. In previous sections, you've manipulated equations. So I'm going to go through the answers, um, like how I write this and and how I do this is, is I get y is greater than, uh, what's it going to be, positive a half x plus 2. So this is my equation. So there's one thing you got to remember is when I manipulate this and this is negative, I have to divide by a negative, which flips the sign. So when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you flip inequality sign. That should be remembered from 7th, 8th grade whenever we talked about it, but definitely should remember for Algebra 2, it has to be. Um, there, like in this one here, this sign will probably flip to greater than or equal to because this is negative on that one. So a little hint for the future. So let's graph this. So positive 2 up there, rise 1, run 2, so rise 1, run 2. I could go down and over as well. So there is my line. This is going to be a dotted line because this is what this tells me. That is dotted. Okay, so let's me, let me get my dotted line here.
Um, let's go that way. Okay. Now, because it's an equality symbol, all right, we're going to have the shade. So because it's greater than, if you remember our notes from the very first video, is we have to shade above the line. So I'm going to shade literally above. And this dot can it keeps going, right? So I'm going to shade above. And that's all you need to do. You don't have to make it like filled in and no, you know, you're, you're, you're going to take 20 minutes to, to do that. It, it, that's okay. It takes three seconds, okay? Just make it a little squiggly line to show where it's shaded. And that's all you got to do. All right, um, literally it is above the line, so that's why we're shading above the line. It's pretty self-explanatory. All right, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, I think that's it for that. Pause the video. No, I'm kidding. I don't want you to pause the video. Don't do that. I got to do the first word problem because otherwise that's not good. All right, a recreation center offers various 30-minute and 60-minute art classes. The recreation director has allotted up to 20 hours per week for art classes. Uh, 20 hours per week, okay? So, they have two different units. We have minutes and hours. So I'm gonna convert the minutes into hours. So this is really a half of an hour, and this is really one hour. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I am going to say X is equal to the 30 minute classes and then y is equal to the 60 minute classes. We have to do this and label them because we have two different things we're talking about. Okay, they're, they're both not 30 minutes and they're both not 60, so I have to abbreviate them and, and label them as x and y. Or you can label them as, you know, um, t for 30 and then s for 60, that's fine. I don't care what variables you use, but we have x and y here, so I figured I'd use x and y. All right, so now, we have a half um, of x, so one half of x, plus, uh, this is one, so one of y has allotted up to 20 hours, so it has to be less than or equal to 20. It could equal 20 and that would be okay, or it could be 19, 17, you know, 15, 3, and that would be okay as well. So 20 or less is how it has to be written. So now I want to solve this uh, for y because I want to graph it. It says write in inequality to represent the number of classes and then graph it. So I get y less than or equal to negative a half x plus 20. So these graphs don't go up to 20. What does this go up to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to say, um, oof, this is going to be a little tough. So 4... Yeah, it's going to be a little tough, huh? Uh, let's go by fours. So this is 4, 8, 12, 16. This is 20. i got to start here. i got to start there. So then I'm going to go down a half. So i got to go down a half. Huh. So i got to go down 1 and over 2. Down 1 and over 2. Down 1 and over 2. And you can continue that trend. Okay, you can continue that trend. So, let's do that. All right, let's graph our line, which is going to be a solid line uh, because it's greater, it's less than or equal. Oh, I don't want to do that. Let's do that one. Let's. Uh, that's not right because it should be solid. So let's get a solid line. There we go. Cool beans. And then because it's less than, I got a shade under. Now. Because this is a real world problem, right? We're talking about real life here in minutes and hours. We do not exist in anything else other than quadrant one. This does not count. Like, we don't actually use quadrants two, three, and four. We don't actually use them when we're talking about real life graphing. So, I'm only caring about quadrant number one. That's why the graph doesn't go further past into quadrant number two. But it's less than, so I'm going to shade everything in here. That's my answer to the problem. Okay, That's part A. Part B, it says, can the recreation director schedule 25 of the 30-minute classes and then 15 of the 60-minute classes? 
Well, what I want to do is I want to look at the shaded region. So I am going to delete them. I'm going to delete everything real quick that because I can. On the X axis, these are your 30 minute classes. And then these are your 60 minute. And these are by fours. So this is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. These are also by fours. Okay? I want to try to keep the same value. If you don't keep the same value on the X's and Y's, then you could not have gone over down one and over two. Okay, you have to keep the same if you want to do that. So, I want to schedule 25, which 25 is going to be right in like here somewhere, and 15. So now I got to see, if, can I get 15? Where's 15? That's going to be right in here. Is this point right there inside the shaded region? The answer is no. So the answer for this one is no because uh, 25 comma 15, which is the ordered pair that I was looking at, is not in shaded region, which is the solution. Okay, so it's not in the shaded region, which is the solution. So that's your explanation. All right, I want you to pause the video. I want you to work on this one here that says Manuel is $15 to spend and do um, the first one there on the right. All right, pause it and then hit play. Now, get to the chopper. Pause the video now. Do it. This one here, again, I'm not going to go through it. So you get Y greater than or equal. You divide it by negative, so that flips. Okay, so it's uh, t negative 3 halves X and then minus 4. So let's go down to minus 4, put a dot. I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go over 2, 1, 2. It's solid. All right, so I'm going to graph a solid line. So like this, and then might as well go back the other way and do that. And it is greater than, so above the line. So above, 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 above. So everything up there. There's your answer for that one. That one was pretty easy. Let's go to the one I'm talking about Manuel in, I think, the fair or something. Yeah, county fair. There we go. Uh, this one's a little more complicated. This is a little different than what we just did, but that's okay. So, he's got $15 to spend at the county fair. It costs $5 for admission, $0.75 cents for a ride, and $0.25 cents for a game. Write the inequality, and then draw a graph, and so on. And we already know R is ride and G is game. I could have very easily said X and Y, but I didn't. I used R and G, so that's what we have to use. So one thing I can tell me is because it costs $5 to get in, we know that he only has $10 left to spend. Okay, that's all he has left to spend. So I can say it's .75 R, $0.75 cents per ride, plus .25 cents per game, has to be less than or equal to 10. It can be equal to 10, and it can be $9 and $8 and whatever, but it cannot be anything over 10. So this is what I want to graph. Okay, and I'm going to leave it as fractions. This is really 3 fourths of R plus 1 fourth of G less than or equal to 10. Okay, so let's bring over the R. So I get 1 fourth of G less than or equal to negative 3 fourths r plus 10. I gotta multiply everything by four to get rid of that. So this is now g less than or equal. This is negative 3 r plus 40. All right, the fours cancel and then I gotta distribute that four through and so on. This is your equation, inequality that we gotta graph. Okay, um, so I'm gonna start at 40. So because there's only 8 here, every one is 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Then i got to go down 3 and over 1. 1, 2, 3 and over 1. 1, 2, 3 and over 1. I know I made that dot, but that's okay. This has to be a solid line. Oops. There we go. And there we go. And theoretically, 
you could have just stopped right there because it's only in the first quadrant. It's less than, so it's anything here. All right, anything there. Now the question says, what is the maximum amount of game tickets Manuel can buy? Well, game tickets are G, and that's my Y, so that's up here. So he can buy 40 of them because that's the highest on that axis. So he can buy 40 game tickets and zero ride tickets. Okay, and that's the maximum. What's the maximum amount of ride tickets he can buy? Well, ride tickets is here on the X. So the maximum he can buy there is, now we gotta do a little more math, okay? So when it crosses the X axis, or, or that R axis there, um, the Y value, the G value is zero. So I gotta solve. This is a little bit more complicated, but that's okay. Let's bring that over. And then I'm just gonna do a quick math. I gotta divide it by negative three to solve for it. So it's like 13. That is how much he can buy. About 13 ride tickets. And then zero game tickets. So you can buy 13 rides, zero game, or you can buy 40 game and zero ride and have a fun day at the county fair. All right, um, we're going to get into the third and final type here, um, graphing absolute value equations and inequality, so all absolute value. Before we get into the graphing, we've got to talk about what absolute value is, what it looks like, what the equation looks like, what the letters mean, and all that stuff. Okay, so A. What A is, is basically um, the slope of the function. Okay, um, so if A is less than zero, it goes down. If A is greater than zero, it goes up. Um, what goes up, what goes down? Well, these absolute value functions, okay, they look like V's or upside down triangles like a mountain or something like that. And if A is zero if A is less than zero, then it's gonna look like this. If A is bigger than zero, it's gonna look like this. So right side up V, upside down V. Very easy. B is going to be the amplitude kind of thing. Um, I'm not too concerned with B. This one is like the one of the hardest things to recognize um, with that B there. Uh, but I will tell you it's always going to be written kind of like this equation right there. It has to be X minus H in parentheses with that B out front. And that's how you will determine that B value. Um, but there's a lot of different things going on there. So I'm not too concerned with that. Um, but um, we'll come back to that when we get to it. We'll get to it in this problem here, actually. Uh, H. H is the x-coordinate of the vertex. And then K is the y-coordinate of the vertex. Okay? So, how do I find the x-coordinate? So two things. One is um, you could write it like this if you really wanted to, but I'm going to kind of give you a little shortcut. If you take, um, well, let's get to an example. We'll get to an example first, and I'll, then I'll explain. Uh, we'll do this. Okay. So the very first one here, um, pretty simple, not too bad, is this is our y value or our k, right? So it's our k. And this here is really our h, but our h in our equation up here, let me clean it up a little bit for you, all right? Our h is really a negative right here, that's a negative. So that means our ordered pair of the vertex is going to be negative four comma negative two. The y value always stays the same. The x value flips signs. So it's negative 4. Okay? 
Now, here's what I'm going to show you on this one. Might as well do it here. This is really a one right here. In order to get to the correct vertex, the correct x value, you need to divide by that one. So it's really negative four divided by one. It doesn't change the value, but over here it will. So we got to make sure that we do that right. So I need the vertex. That's what we have. This is the starting point. The vertex equals starting point. That's that tip where the V starts. All right. The next thing we need is our slope. Our slope is the A value times number in front of X. Okay, so this is a 1 times a 1, so our slope is equal to 1. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so vertex, negative 4, negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2, right there. In this case, A being 1, which means it's greater than 0, so our arrow, or our, our V, is going to go right side up. It's going to be a normal V. Our slope is 1. So starting at the point, I'm going to go up 1 and over 1. And because I want it to be a V, I have to go back to the original point, go up 1, and go the other way 1. So I'm always constantly making a up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, so on. So the V starts at the vertex and goes one direction and then goes the other direction. And it looks like that V. All right? I am going to do this one over here, and then we'll get into some inequalities and some other stuff, some little harder stuff. So <clears throat> let's work on this one. Okay, I need the vertex. Remember, the vertex is this number flipped, so it's 6. I got to divide it by this number, comma, this number. So the vertex is 3, comma, 1. So let's graph it, 3, comma, 1. A is negative 2, which is less than 0, so my V goes down. It's now an upside down V. In order to find the slope, you take the A times that number in front of the X, so that's 4. I don't care about the negative because I already dealt with the negative by going upside down. So that took into account the negative. I don't care about the slope being positive 4, negative 4. That's arbitrary. The, the A being negative tells me that's upside down. That's all that matters. Since the slope is 4, I'm going to go back to the vertex and go down 4. Because that's upside down. I can't go up this way. i got to go down. So 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Right? Remember, slope is over 1. And then i got to go the opposite direction. So then 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And so on. Then I have... my V there, and upside down V. Okay, pretty easy, not too difficult. Okay, um, here's what we're going to do. I am going to do, um, let's see, we'll do um, this one. I'll do that one there. Then you're going to do the other three. Okay, so we'll finish up this one, and then you'll do the other three. All right, <clears throat> so vertex. Flip this number here, 1, divided by the number in front of the x, which is 1, comma, negative 2, which is just 1, comma, negative 2. That's the vertex, 1, comma, negative 2. For the slope, a is equal to 3, which is greater than 0, so it goes up. Fantastic. Then I have to multiply that by the number on the inside, so it's 3 times 1 is 3. That means that from the vertex, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, and then over 1 the same way in the opposite direction, right? So my V goes that way. Because this is an inequality now, this is less than, that means that the V, the line, is going to be dotted. All right, so make sure we get a dotted line. Uh, for you guys that draw these lines, all you got to do is just draw a line and like erase certain points of it. Um, instead of drawing like little dashes, it's not that big of a deal. 
And then, remember, because it's an inequality, I have to shade. And this is down, right? So this is down, so that means it's underneath the point. So underneath the point, if I think about it, is down here, and then everything that's below the line. So literally, the answer is going to be a big time shaded region. And the only thing that's not shaded is what's actually inside um, that absolute value V that's made. So what's inside there is the only thing that's not shaded. Everything else is shaded. All right, what I want you guys to do is to pause the video, um, try those three that are still here right now, and then hit play, and we will go over them afterwards. I'm Chuck Norris. I can build a snowman out of rain. Pause the video. All right. This one is pretty easy. Um, the vertex is going to be 0, 4. There's no number over here. Like It's not like plus 7 or minus 7 or whatever. So there's no number to the right of that. So it's just 0. So 0, 4 is up here. The slope is 1 times 1. So that's just 1. A is 1, which is greater than 0, so that means it goes up. So I'm going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, and so on. Because it's greater than or equal, that means that the line is going to be solid. Fantastic that way. And because it's um, greater than, that means I'm shading up, I'm shading above. So in this case, I'm shading in that v absolute value v that we just draw uh drew draw okay drew drawn i don't know i teach math okay so that's that one let's go to the bottom left here uh, so vertex i have four divided by two negative four right we got to flip that sign comma negative one slope is going to be negative one times that so it's just it's just 2, I don't care about the positive negative, because the A is negative, which is less than 0, so it goes down. That's all the information that I need to graph this function. This is negative 2, comma 1. The negative 2, comma negative 1 there. Okay, negative 2, comma negative 1. There's our vertex. Slope is 2, it goes down, so down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so on. I can do whatever. It's equal, so all I'm doing is drawing just a line on both of them. And then it's not any in inequality. It's not greater than, less than, whatever, so I'm done. I don't have to shade. I have, I'm done. Okay, I'm done on that one. Let's go to the last one here. My vertex is 9 over 3, comma, 2, which is 3, comma, 2. My slope is uh, 2 times 3, which is 6. I don't care about the negative. My A is negative 2, which is less than 0, so the graph goes down. Okay? So 3, 2, we start. 3, 2, boom. Uh, I'm going down 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, over 1, and over 1. It's greater than or equal, so that means my line is solid not dotted and it is less than so now I'm shading below that dot the vertex which in this case is inside the V on the downside there so my answer is the V absolute value V with that shaded actually it's like this right with a shaded region on the inside of it okay but um, I will see you in the next one deuces